Barrel fitting 101, we're gonna start with the basics. Hi folks, Bob Silver from Fusion Firearms. Okay, today we're gonna we're gonna start with some basics. Um, we did get into a barrel fitting video a little bit ago, and it went on for an awful long time. And there's a lot of information for people to uh, to take in. So what what we've decided is we're gonna break it up. Uh, you're probably gonna have six, seven, eight, whatever barrel videos here on different ways and different areas of, of fitting. Um, so this is gonna be basically just 101. What are you looking at for fitting? Um, and what I'll do is I'll ink up a couple of spots on this barrel. Um, but basically, I, again, for most people's application, which is going to be, you know, combat shooting, recreational shooting, um, you, you know, some target shooting, you're, you're going you're gonna to be able to fit one of these uh, if you have some, some basic hand skills and some basic tools, you, you should be able to fit a barrel and tune it somewhat. Um, you know, and again, if, if you're not mechanical, if there's something that, you know, it scares you, um, you're better off, you know, sending it into us or get a, getting a competent gunsmith to help you out. So where, where do I start with, with, you know, here's a, here's a barrel, say, you know, this commander slide here, a guy wants to fit this commander threaded barrel to it. Um, he's got a ramped frame because I got a ramp barrel here. Where are my fitting points? What are the, what are the areas I'm going to look for while, while I'm fitting? So number one, again, I'll, I'll ink this up in green a little bit. There's, there's gonna be two areas here of contact on the ledges for the ramp barrel, all right? On a standard, standard uh, barrel with no ramp, you may end up hitting in this area here. Most pistols won't, but you will sometimes find where you have to file slightly there. Um, some other fitting areas where you want to look for is going to be the back of the hood and these two shoulders on the sides and the angles that will be on the edges here, the little relief angles that are put, filed on the edges here. Uh, that's part, part of the fitting. Also, you'll look here at the bottom feet. So you want to look at the bottom feet here and this contour here is another thing you're gonna look at for that contour and the, the barrel feet there. And you may have to fit this barrel foot area here. Also in consideration is gonna be your link. What link size do you want? Again, I generally prefer setting with a, one of our Fusion Match barrels. I generally like to set up with a uh, number three link and, and start there. Uh, depending on you know how worn the pistol is or how tight the pistol is, um, you may want to adjust the length. But I generally like to stick right around the number three length. Once in a while, you'll see I'll go for a number four, uh, but generally a number three is is really the way to go if to set up with for the most part for for most people's standard fitting. Um, so you'll have these sides. The other considerations you will have you know, your locking lugs. You really, I, I have seen a lot of uh, hard fit barrels where you've got a monkey with these locking lugs and everything. Uh, you, you shouldn't have to, okay? If the, if the barrels are designed properly, you shouldn't have to mess with the, the locking lugs. Again, these locking lug areas are extremely difficult for most people to fit at home. And it just becomes a real, a real nightmare for a lot of people to try to fit locking lugs. So it's important that you know, you buy a barrel where the locking lugs are in good position. And really, I'll put an arrow here to the first lug. And this is your money lug, okay? This is the lug that is the most important. The one that I'll, I'll ink in here with green again. It's going to be the first lug right here. There's three lugs you'll see on the 1911 barrel. Um, and again, why is there three? Actually, in a modern day, 1911, you probably only need one lug, okay? If, if I was going to redesign the 1911, I would design it with one lug. That's it. It's all you really need. Also, you'll notice if you ever see, uh, uh, like, uh, military match pistols, 
they take these lugs right off, boom, gone. The reason these lugs were designed in the pistol to begin with was the, in the beginning, the 1911 uh, slide was totally soft. It had no heat treatment other than a few positions. There was a few um, uh, spot points on the slide that were hardened, induction hardened. Other than that, the slides were dead soft. So they just allowed uh, the lugs to work themselves in until they kind of seated themselves. And, and that's why they put three lugs on. That was the idea that John Browning had for, for the three lug design. Um, and again, you got to look at what materials, what processes were available, you know, over a hundred years ago versus now. So, uh, you know, we've come a long way with the way we machine things, the way we, uh, we can select materials, hard materials, everything else. Um, so, you know, those are the, the actual basic fitting points. The other would be where your bushing race is. And that's another thing you'll see, you know, most barrels, they'll cut back uh, your bushing race only to a certain point, And then they'll, you'll end up with a clearance cut to the back of the, the uh, where you, you come up toward the locking lug here, the body of the barrel over here. Um, another thing that you will find at times, um, you know, you may get some interferences that you want to take care of uh, on the sides of the barrels once in a while in these locations here, which I'll circle right in here. You'll end up with some, some areas every once in a while that will, depending on the slide that you have, that will rub a little bit hard and you'll see those rub marks. You'll see the, the burnishing going on on the side of the barrel and that's nothing to be you know concerned about but basically what i do is just take it and buff those areas out so that you'll relieve a little bit of material on the sides of the barrel to give it more clearance i don't like to see the barrels binding in all different types of of lockup points you know you'll see some point people that'll want to try to you know hard fit the barrel with five different lockup points well Eventually, because of the hardnesses, differences in the materials, and, and you know, you'll even get slides with hard spots in it, soft spot, spots in it, you know, especially on production models that they're making thousands and thousands of them, um, you know, you will end up ha having areas wear before other areas, causing those lockup points to end up changing the dynamics of the pistol, at, you know, as you're using it. So, I'm not saying it's going to be an unsafe condition that's not it. It's just going to continue to change the dynamics of the, of the pistol. So one of the things that you're looking for is consistent lockup. Consistent lockup all the time and not really worry about, oh, do I have eight, eight points that I'm hitting on here or six points or whatever. You know, there are a few points. I like to see a couple of contact points either on the side or the top of the hood. You know, on ramp barrels down in here, I like to see a little bit once in a while, at least on one of the contact points, either vertically or horizontally. And then the other I like to see is just going to be a little bit of rub, you know, but again, not too tight where you're going to create binding, but where you can actually put a little bit of thumb pressure on your link in your barrel feet and be able to move this consistently with the slide stop pin. Um, again, another thing, your slide stop pin is something to take into consideration. Why? Because you're going to find slide stop pins of all different diameters. You know, you're going to find them down to 198 all the way up to 201. Um, and a few thousandths on the lugs can make a drastic difference is if, if the gun is going to be binding when it's locking up or, you know, or you're making it all the way to, you know, the back, uh, the back dead center of the feet for, for good lockup. So we'll, we'll show you some close-ups of a few of these areas on these barrels, and that should help you. Um, you know, and then again, we'll get into more detailed fitting of each area um, and how you do it at home. Um, and then from there, we'll get into the areas where, uh, again, the, the feed ramp, you know, how, how you want to condition your feed ramp, depending if it's a ramped barrel or depending if it's a non-ramp barrel, how you're going to condition, condition the feed ramp um, uh, or the throat of the, the, uh, uh, the barrel itself, how you're going to condition that throat so that, you know, you have good and reliable feeding. Um, and there's a lot of components on, on, you know, involved in that also, but we'll go over that in a later, later video. So I hope this helps you out. It'll give you the, the basic fitting points of what you want to look for, what you don't have to look for. Um, you know, and again, depending on what type of pistol you're trying to build, 
uh, and, and what your application is, you know, that gives you some idea from, from these fitting points of, you know, what to look for, what to, you know, try to, you know, make contact a little bit better and other areas that, hey, I don't really have to sweat it because this is going to be a recreational pistol. I just want it to feed well and, and have fun shooting with it. So again, hopefully this helps you. We'll see you again. Thank you very much from FusionFirearms.com.